Welcome everyone to part 11 and the final part of this complete Blender beginner tutorial series. In this part we're going to be rendering out the final image and we're going to be doing a little bit of compositing and then we're also going to do some basic animation, rendering that out and making the final animation. So let's get started. So I'm just going to do a few things to make the final image look really nice and then I'll show you some different render settings and we'll render this out and do a little bit of compositing. So if I press Z and move my mouse up that'll go into the rendered view and you can see this is how it's looking. So this is looking pretty cool but I do want to add a depth of field because I want some of the places really close up to be just a little Little bit blurred and then some of the spots on the very back really far away just a little bit blurred so that the house is in focus. So to do this I'll just press Z go back into solid view and I'm going to place my 3D cursor right here on the house. Now what I'll do is press shift A and I'm going to go over here to empty and I'm going to add a plane axis. Now why I'm adding this is because I'm going to tell the camera to focus on this object so that wherever this object is that's where the focus is going to be and everything else closer and farther away will be a little bit blurred. And why I'm adding in this empty object is because you can't see this in the render. With the empty objects, you can't tab into edit mode. They're just these objects that are invisible. When you go into rendered mode, you can't see them. So now let's scroll out here and I'm gonna select the camera. I'm going to go to the camera settings right here. And you can see that if I scroll down, there is a depth of field. So I'm going to click on this and turn it on. And then you can click on the eyedropper for the focus object and just select the object. I'm just going to click right here and start typing in empty because that's the name of the object. And then just click on empty. Now, if I go into the camera view by pressing zero on the number pad and press Z and move my mouse down to go into the material preview, you can start to see this taking effect. So the F stop here, this is the value that I need to change. So if I turn this value way down, you can see that just the house is in focus and everything else is blurred. Now this is way too big. So I'm just going to start to turn the F stop value up until it looks better. So I don't want the blur to be super strong. I can also go into rendered mode here and just look around and see how that's looking. And I think I'm going to turn the f-stop value to two. You can turn it to whatever you want, but that way the front here is just a little bit blurred. And then when you look back here, the background is a bit blurred as well. But then the house, which is the main object of the scene is nice and focused. So I'm just gonna turn the f-stop to a value of two. Okay, so let's go over some render settings now so that we can make the render as fast as possible. So if you're using Eevee, then this should render pretty quick. Um, I'm just going to switch over to Eevee just to show you what I do. So in Eevee, I like to have the ambient occlusion, screen space reflections, and motion blur turned on. And you can see that these shadows down here in Eevee, they're a little bit dark. So if you wanted to, you could select the light and like double tap R, rotate this around, and something like that looks a little bit nicer. Now, if you are using Eevee, there is one really cool thing that you can do to make this look even more realistic. What you can do is press Shift A, and I'm gonna go down here and there's this light probe. I'm going to add the irradiance volume. So just add this in and I'm going to scale it up. I'm actually going to scale it by shift Z and that way it won't scale up or down. And then I'll just scale the whole thing a little bit bigger. Basically what I wanna do is all these little dots in here, I want that to cover the main area of the scene. Okay, just something like that, that looks pretty good. Maybe move it up just a little bit. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna scroll down here and you can see that there's this indirect lighting tab on the render setting. So open the indirect lighting. And if you click on bake indirect lighting, what it's gonna do is it's going to basically bake the light and make it look more realistic. So it's still going here and now it's finished. So you can see that now that it's finished, it's added like a shadow down here. It's added some shadows like all around the house and around the particle systems. And it is subtle, but it does make it look a bit more realistic. So if you're doing this in Eevee, that just helps to make it look a little bit more realistic. I'm just gonna delete this now because I'm gonna be using cycles. So I'm gonna switch over to cycles. Now what I'm gonna do for the cycle settings is the sampling, the render samples. I'm gonna turn this up to 100 because for this scene, I think 100 samples will look good. And then if I scroll down here, you can see that there is this light paths setting. Now, what these light paths are is this is Blender calculating the different light paths, calculating the light and simulating it. But right now it actually simulates it more than we need to. And so it's actually going to take longer to render. So we can actually turn these settings down and then that way the render is gonna be a little bit faster. So there's a bunch of different things here. What I'm gonna do is turn the total to two, the diffuse, I'm gonna turn this to two, the glossy, I'm gonna turn this to two. And then this transparency, this can just be zero because we don't really need it to calculate any of this stuff. But you can see if I turn this transmission all the way to zero and zoom in here, you can see that because we have glass, now the glass isn't really rendering properly and it looks all black. So the transmission, I'm just going to turn this up to two or actually just one, I think one looks fine, yep. 
one looks just fine so I'll turn that up to one. Basically if we can turn these values down more and more the render will be a little bit faster. Now there's also this indirect light, I can turn this down to zero, that doesn't really affect anything. And then there's also the filter gloss, I'm going to turn that to zero, and then the caustics right here, reflective and refractive caustics, we can turn these down because that's not really going to affect the scene at all. So now that we've turned a lot of these down, it'll render faster. And then as I talked about earlier in this tutorial series, if you have a GPU, you can turn that on and use it. And then also, as I talked about earlier, the color management, I'm going to set this to filmic and then the look will be high contrast. If this is set to standard, it'll just be a little bit less realistic. So filmic will just make the colors and the lighting a little bit more accurate to the real world. Now something else that you can do to make the render a little bit faster is to change the tile size. Because depending on your computer and depending on your GPU or your CPU or whatever you're rendering, changing the tile size in the render can actually make the render a little bit faster. So you don't have to do this, but I'm just going to press F12 to render, and you can see that there is my tile size, so I have one GPU and I'm rendering with that, so it's going to render with one tile. And when it comes to changing your tile size, it really does depend on what you're using to render. So if you click right here on the render settings and go down here, you can see that there is a performance. So I'm just going to click on the performance and you can see that there is the tiles here. So if you change this up, then it's going to change the size of the tiles. Now a general rule of thumb is if you're rendering with your CPU, then having smaller tiles work better. But if you're rendering with your GPU, having bigger tiles work better. I don't really know why exactly this works, but for some reason, how CPUs are made and how they render, having a smaller tile size works better, but then when you're rendering with the GPU, GPUs work better if the tile size is actually bigger. So what you can do is you can actually tell Blender to automatically make the tile size what's going to work best for your computer. So what you can do is go to Edit and go to Preferences, and we're going to be turning on this add-on here. So click on the add-ons and you're going to need to type in auto right here. And you can see right down here there is this auto tile size. Now I use this for all my Blender projects so if you just want to turn that on and then save the preferences that way it'll be all of your Blender projects. So if I close this now you can see that it's added this auto tile size and if you click on it that's going to turn it on and you can see that now that this is turned on Blender decides what the best tile size is going to be. So you can see that's how big it was and if I render that again with my CPU now you can see that the add-on decides Decided that it would be better to make the tiles smaller when rendering with my CPU. Now you can see that there's a bunch of little tiles here and that's because for every core that you have in your CPU that's going to be a tile. So my CPU has 12 cores and 24 threads so because it has 12 cores it's going to be rendering with 12 little tiles but my GPU is just one GPU so it's going to have one big tile. Now my GPU is actually like four times as fast at rendering so even though the CPU has a lot more tiles rendering with my GPU is actually way faster. Now what you can do is the time here, you can actually see how fast this took to render. So you can see this took 29 seconds. If I change this to my GPU and render this now, you can see it says that the last one is 29 seconds, and then it says the time here, and it's counting up, and it's counting how fast it's going to take to render. And once it finishes, you can see that now this one only took 12 seconds. So you can see that my GPU is a lot faster than my CPU. So that's the auto tile size and it does help to speed up the render times a little bit. So now you can just press F12 or go render and render image. I just rendered it out, so just render that out. Now if you zoom into your rendered image, you can see that kind of in the shadows here, there's all this little grain here, and I'm going to show you how to fix this. So to fix this, I'm going to scroll over here and you can see that there is this compositing tab right here. And then what you're going to need to do is click on use nodes and then you're also going to need to click on this backdrop and that way you'll be able to see what's in the background when you're compositing your image. So what I can do now is hold down the control and shift key and click on the render layers and that's going to add the viewer node and then there will be our image in the background. And this is using the node wrangler add-on feature and I talked about the node wrangler add-on earlier in this tutorial series but if you don't have it enabled you can go edit and go to preferences and then on the add-ons here start typing in node and just you can see there's this node wrangler add-on so just turn that on and now when you control and shift and click on a node it's going to preview what the node is seeing so how i'm going to smooth out this image and make it look a little bit nicer is i'm going to press shift a and I'm going to click on the search here and I'm going to start typing in denoise and you can see that Blender has a denoise node and this denoise node works really good so I'm going to put it right in here and drop it in the connection and then I'm going to plug it up to the composite so the composite is what it actually composites but the viewer is just what you're seeing in the view 
And now you can see that it looks a lot smoother. Now this background here, if you press V, that's going to zoom the background out. And if you press Alt V, that's going to zoom the background in. And then also if you hold down the Alt key and click with your middle mouse wheel, you can zoom that around. So I'm going to press V, actually Alt V and zoom in. And you can see that right in here, it does look a lot smoother, but there's also some little glitches here and it almost looks a little bit blobby. And why this is happening is because we need to increase the samples a little bit. So the render samples, I have this at 100. If I just turn this up even more like 200 and then render that again, it's going to render it a little bit better. So there's gonna be more and more samples and it'll render out the image and make it look nicer. And then when it denoises, it'll have more data and it'll be able to smooth it out and make it look nicer. Now, when you increase the render samples, that's going to make it take a lot longer to render, but the image will look nicer. So I'll press F12 and just render this out again. So now that this is rendered, I can press the escape key and that will go back to the compositor. And you can see that now that's a lot smoother and it looks a lot better and I'm happy with that. Now something else that you can do to your final image is you can actually do some color correction. So if you wanna change the colors a little bit, just make the final image look a little bit nicer, you can add color correction. So to do this, I'm gonna pull this render layers out and I'm going to add some color correction nodes right in here. So I'm gonna press Shift A and you can go to color and you can try a bunch of these. There's a bunch of these nodes that work really well. My favorite one though is the RGB curve. So on the search here, I'm gonna click on the search and start typing in RGB and you can see there's the RGB curve. So I'm going to drop the RGB curves in between the render layers and the denoise. And then every time you change something, the denoise node will have to recomposite. So to hide the denoise node for the time being, I'm going to select the denoise node and press M. And you can remember M by mute. And so it mutes the node. And now I can change the colors. You can see I can bring this up, make it darker, whatever I want to do. But you can see if I press M again, now it's going to turn it back. Now, if I change this, you can see the compositing down there. It takes a little while to composite. And so there's some lag in the compositing. So that's why I just click on this and press M to mute it. And then once I'm done, once I like the colors, then I can add the denoise node back on. So what I like to do is add a little point here and then also pull this down and that'll make everything a little bit more saturated. And then also if you wanna play around with these, like maybe there's a little bit too much green in the scene, I can click on the green. The, the G is for green, the B is for blue, and the R is for red. So I'm gonna click on the green. And then if you click on a point and drag it down, you can see that it's going to get rid of that color more and more. Now, if for some reason you add a point and you wanna delete it, you can just pre press the X here and that'll delete that point. Okay, maybe I'll go to the blue, play around with this if I want more blue or less blue, and then the red. And then another node that you can use to do some color correction is to press Shift A and search for the color balance. Now, if you click on the color balance, you can just drop it in here and you can play around with these values. So if you drag this around, you can see what it's doing. So it's giving it more blue there or less blue. You can also make it darker or lighter. So there's the lift, the gamma and the gain. So you can play around with these and edit the colors a little bit if you want to. And then once you're happy with the color correction, you can press a M with the denoise to selected and that'll unmute the denoise node. So now to save this image as a finished image on your computer, what you need to do is press F11 or go over to the rendering tab. So over here, you can just press F11 and that'll go to your render result or just go over to the rendering tab. So you can see that this is showing the render result, so it's showing what it rendered, but I want to show the viewer node because I want to see what our compositing looks like. So what you can do is click right up here, and then you can see there's a viewer node, or just start typing it in and click on the viewer node. This is going to show you what your compositing looks like with the final image and with all the color correction and everything. So to save this image, you can press Shift Alt S, or you can go image and click on save as and just save it somewhere on your computer as final render. And then right up here, the file format, I'm just gonna change this to PNG. You could also turn it to JPEG. I'm gonna save it to PNG and then save as image. So there we go, there is the finished render. Now let's go ahead and do the animation. So what you can do here is press the escape key and then that'll go back to the compositor. Let's go back to the layout here and then just escape out of this and we can do the final animation. So I'll press Z and move my mouse down to go into the material preview. So what I wanna do is have the camera slowly moving into the scene and then there's also the flag that's already moving and then I wanna have the clouds slowly moving across the scene. So to move these clouds, if I just select these clouds and start to move them, you can see they're not moving all together and that's because these objects are still those meta balls and they're acting a little bit weird. 
So what I'm going to do to these clouds is convert them so that they're normal mesh objects and then they'll be easier to animate. So I'm just going to select them and just make sure you select the mesh kind of in here. Don't select the little circle, select the whole thing and that'll select all of them. And then to convert it, I'm going to click on object, go down here to convert to and click on mesh. And you can see now that if I tab into edit mode and zoom in, you can see there's actual geometry. So that looks really good and the geometry is pretty messed up, but it looks fine in the view. So I'll just press zero to go to the camera view and I'm going to move the timeline up here so we can see it a little bit better and I'm going to move it all the way back to frame one. So this right here, this is what frame you're currently on and you can actually change this if you want to type in a frame, if you wanted to like type in a frame and change it, I'm going to click on this, change it to frame one and then the start frame, this is the start of the animation. And then the end frame, that's the end. So 250 frames in 24 frames per second is 10 seconds. So if you click right over here to the output settings, you can see that there is this frame rate right here. Now the default is 24 frames per second, and I think that looks great for what we're doing. So I'm gonna leave it at 24 frames per second. So 250 frames in 24 frames per second is 10 seconds. So that way the animation will be 10 seconds long. So I'm just going to show you how to do some basic animation and we're going to animate the clouds and the camera moving in. So I'm going to go to frame one, just move over to frame one. You can also use the arrow keys, right arrow key and left arrow key to move the frames. So I'm going to go to frame one and I'm going to, with the cloud selected, press G and move them over and then click and place them about there. So how you do animation is you add a keyframe where you want the object to be, and then you move along the timeline, and then you move the object and add another keyframe. And then what Blender will do is it will move the object in between those two keyframes. So to add a keyframe, I want to move this object. So I'm gonna press I. So I is the shortcut key for adding a keyframe. Now I want to click on location because I want to move the cloud. So I'm gonna click on location right here. Now what I can do is I can move all the way over to the end frame, which is 250. And actually I'm gonna move one frame over, so 251. And then what I can do is I can press G and drag these clouds over and then click to place that right there. And then I need to add another keyframe. So I'm going to press I again and then click on location again. Now, if I click with my middle mouse wheel and kind of pull up or make this timeline bigger, and you can see here that on the very top of the timeline, where the keyframes are, it's going to add these diamonds. Now these diamonds, you can actually select them. If I just select them, you can see this one's now white and this one is yellow because it's selected. And actually, I can actually drag around these keyframes. And if I deselect this object, the keyframe is gonna disappear because we don't have the object selected. So if I just select this object, you can see that now I can see the two keyframes again. Now, if I press the space bar to play this, you can see that these clouds are slowly moving across here. Now you can see that they start to speed up and then as they slow down, they start to slow down. And this is because of the keyframe interpolation. So on default, what Blender does is it makes a very smooth transition between the two keyframes. So you can see that it starts out really slow and you can see it gets faster and faster and the clouds are at their fastest point right here. And then as it comes to the ends, the clouds start to slow down very slowly and then stop. And that works great for a lot of things, but in this case, what I wanna do is I want to have the clouds moving at a consistent rate from the starting to the ending. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hover my mouse over the timeline, and then I'm gonna press the T key, and you can see that it says set keyframe interpolation. So the default is what I just talked about is Bezier. So Bezier is the default, and you can see it gives a little image, it slowly speeds up and then slowly speeds down. You can see that, that little line there kind of curves. What I wanna do is I wanna change it to linear so that it goes from one side all the way to the other and the speed doesn't change. So just click on linear. And when you do this, you need to press A in your timeline. And if you press A, just like objects, if you press A in your timeline with the object selected, it's going to select or deselect the keyframes. So select that and then press D and then click on linear. And now when you press the space bar to play, you can see that the clouds are moving at a consistent rate and they're not speeding up or slowing down. Now to edit the keyframes a little bit better, what you can do is you can open the graph editor and the graph editor is a window where you can edit and play around with the keyframes. So what I'm going to do is click right here and bring my crosshair right up there to the corner and I'm gonna click and drag out. Then right up here, I'm gonna click on this and I'm gonna go over here to the graph editor. Now, if I zoom out here and select the clouds, you can see that here is the keyframes. So here's the first keyframes that we added, these ones right here, and then 
there's a line here and it's very straight and it's going all the way over to the ending right here. Now if I select this, I can press G to grab and you can see it's going to move around the keyframe. I can also press A to deselect and A to select just like in the 3D view, that'll select the keyframes. And just like in the 3D view of Blender, I could press B and box select and I can select keyframes and deselect keyframes. So for instance, let's say that I wanted these clouds to stop sooner. I could press B and box select these keyframes and then press G and click with my middle mouse wheel and bring it over. And if I bring it down really small, you can see now those clouds are moving very fast because they're moving from here over to here really fast. And you can also see that on the timeline, they're moving from here to here really quickly. Now I don't want this, so I'm just going to press G, click with my middle mouse wheel. You can do it either in the timeline or this one and just move this to 151. So just make sure that is on 151. Now let's say that you wanted the clouds to move faster because maybe when you play this, they're a little bit too slow. If I look in the camera view here, they may be a little bit slow for you. Maybe you want them to be a little bit faster. I actually think they're a little too fast, so I'm gonna make them slower, but let me just show you how to make them faster. So what you do is you zoom in and then you can drag this blue line here on this darker area and I'm going to put it right on that keyframe. Then what you can do is you can press G and move this around and then click to place that. I'm actually gonna speed it up, so I'm gonna move it over here. And now that I've moved this over, I can press I again and insert location. And now what it's going to do is it's going to override the previous keyframe because we were right on the first keyframe and so it's going to override it and add another keyframe on top of it. One thing that you could also do is just select this keyframe, press X and delete it, and then you can press G, move this over even farther, and then press I and then insert location. And now it's going to move. And then if you wanted this to slowly speed up and slowly speed down, you could double tap A to select everything, press T again, and T will work in here, and it'll also work over here. And then you can click back on Bezier. So Bezier is the default, and you can see that Bezier is a very smooth transition, so it kind of speeds up and then slows down. But I want the movement to be consistent, so I'll press T again, change this to linear, and now you can see it's a very straight movement. Now there's actually a way to add keyframes faster because when you're animating like a character or something, you don't want to have to press I all the time and add location or rotation or scale. If you want to animate the rotation or animate the scale, you would click on this. There's actually a quicker way to do that and that is the auto key. So what you do is you click on this little thing here and this is the auto key. If you turn this on, it's going to be blue with white. And what happens now is that every single time you move an object or rotate an object or scale an object, it's automatically going to add a keyframe without you telling it to. So this is a really cool feature. Just remember to turn it off once you're done because if you animate and then when you're done, you start to like model some stuff, it'll start to add keyframes on those objects where you don't want them. So you can turn this on when you're going to start to do the animation and then you can turn it off when you're done. So I'm going to play through this and I think that the clouds are moving a little bit too fast. So I'm just going to move. So I'm just going to move this blue line over here by just clicking up here, bringing it over to 251. And then I'm going to press G to grab, move it a little bit back. And because we had that on, because we had this auto key already on, it's going to automatically override the previous keyframe. So if I just press G, click, you can see that these are changing. What it's doing is it's overriding it, so it's basically deleting the old one and then adding a new keyframe on top. And now if I play through this, you can see how fast the clouds are moving. Okay, so that looks really good. I'm just going to be animating the camera now, and then we'll be done. So I'm just going to click on the camera, press zero to go into the camera view. You can also just select the camera by clicking on the outline right here. And I want the camera to be zoomed out and then slowly zoom in. So to move the camera out, let me just move back here to frame one. I can press G and then double tap Z and that will move me in and out. So I can just move out a little bit, make sure you don't zoom out too far because if you zoom out too far, you can start to see the edge of the hill falling off there. Let me just bring this down a little bit more. You can see the edge of the hill is falling off there so I can press G and move this over a little bit. Zoom in by pressing G and then double tapping Z. Okay, so there is where it's going to be at the starting and you can see that because we have this auto keying on it automatically added a keyframe So that's really great. So now let's move all the way over You can also just click on this and type in 251 and that way it's going to place the blue line to 251 frames now what I can do is move the camera in so I'll press G Double tap Z, bring it in. Also press G and move it over a little bit, just like that. And now if I play through this, you can see the camera's gonna start to speed up and then it's gonna slow down when it gets to the end. Now, I don't really want this. I want it to be consistent, just like the cloud. So with all of these keyframes selected by pressing A, I'm gonna press T 
and then click on linear. And now you can see the camera is moving at a more consistent rate. Now, right now the camera is moving really slowly, so I wanna speed it up. So I will drag over here and go to this first keyframe and I wanna override it. So I'll press G, double tap Z, bring this in and bring it over, bring it in a little bit more. And now you can see that again, because we have the auto key, it's automatically going to insert a keyframe there. And now it's a little bit faster. Now I think I want this to be even faster, so I'll pull this out a little bit more. And then down here at the end, I will bring this in a little bit more. So I'm pressing G and double tapping Z to zoom the camera in. Okay, that's a lot better. I like how the camera is zooming in there, but you can see over here at the very starting, the hill is being cut off a little bit, so I wanna move the hill over. But I don't want to move it over right now because if I move it over right now, it's going to add a keyframe to it. So I need to turn the auto key off then I can select the hill and press G and just move it over. Okay, now if I play through that, I can press Control Spacebar with my mouse in the 3D view, and we can just check out the final animation. All right, so that is looking really good. So we are going to render this out now. So I've already talked about the render settings. So let's just set an output to render out all these images, because basically what we need to do is we need to render out the images as an image sequence. And then once it's all rendered out, we will throw that into Blender's video editor and then render that out as the finished animation. So I'm gonna click on the output settings and scroll down here and you can see that there is an output and then there's also a file format. So I'm gonna use PNG, you could also use JPEG if you want to, and then click on this little file browser to set the output. And that'll bring up the file browser, and so what we need to do is make a new folder and then put all the images into that folder. So there is actually a plus here, so if you just go to where you want on your computer to add the images, click on the plus here, and that's going to add a new folder. I can name this, I'm just gonna name this folder rendered images, and then I'll double click on it to go into the folder and then click on accept. So now it's going to render out those images into that folder on your computer. So then before you render out the animation, go file and save, and then you can go render and then click on render animation or click on control F12. And then what this will do is it'll render out each image, just like it rendered out one image, it's going to just continue to render out all the images and it'll put those images into that folder. So click on render animation. Now, if you're rendering this and it's taking way too long to render, there's a few things that you can do. One thing that you can do is use EV because EV will render a lot faster. Another thing that you could do is this resolution here uh, you can see that there is a percentage. If you turn this down to like 50, it's only gonna render half the size of the image, so it will be less quality, but it will render a lot faster. I'm just gonna leave this at 100. And then also you can go over to the render settings and you could turn the sampling down. It will make the final images look a little bit less quality, but if it's taking too long to render, then you may need to turn that down. So usually when I'm rendering out an animation, I just set it all up and then I just render it and then I just walk away and do something else and let my computer render and then come back to it in a little while once it's finished rendering. Or if your computer can handle it, you could just render it and then just put it over in the background and work on some other stuff on your computer while you're waiting for it to render. All right, so just go render and render the animation. And you may have noticed that when it finishes rendering, it does a quick compositing. So right here, once it finishes, you can see it's about to finish and then it does the compositing and it smooths that all out and does the color correction and then it goes on to the next frame. And here is my file browser with the rendered images folder. If I just go into this, you can see it's rendering out each image. All right, and it finished. So the animation is finished. So what I'm gonna do is just go file and save this again. And then we need to open up a new Blender file so that we can video edit this together to a final animation. So to do this, I'm gonna go file and I'm gonna go new and you could open up a new general. What I'm gonna do is go down here and click on video editing. And you can see that it's gonna open up the video editing layout for us. Now, before we get started with the video editing, one thing to make sure is to go up here to the render properties, scroll down and on the color management, make sure this is set to standard because if it's set to filmic, it's gonna edit the colors a little bit and mess the colors up and make it look a little bit bad. So just set this to standard and that way it won't mess around with the colors. And if you'd like to learn how to do video editing in Blender, I do have a complete Blender tutorial series on how to get started with video editing. I'll leave a link in the description to that if that's something you'd like to watch. But I will be going over the basic things so that you can follow along. So here is the timeline. What I'm gonna do is press Shift A, 
and that'll bring up the add menu. And I'm gonna go down here to image sequence. Just click on that. And then in the file browser, you're gonna to navigate to where you've saved the rendered images. So I'm just gonna press A and that'll select all the images and then click on add image strip. Now, when you do that, if I scroll out here, you can, add, you can see it adds this purple strip and this is an image sequence strip. So now if I press the space bar to play, you can see that here is our rendered animation. So that's looking really cool. So you can see that uh, the end frame that ends at 150. So that's perfect because our end frame is at 150. And also if you go over here to the render settings, let me just bring this down. You can see we render this out at 24 frames per second. So that's good. And then if you did render it with a smaller resolution, then you're gonna need to change that. But I render this out as the default of 1920 by 1080 with a hundred. So that all looks good. So now we can just render this out to a video file. So just scroll down here to the output and I'm going to change the file format to FFmpeg video and that way it'll be a video file when we render it out. Now if you open up the encoding here, I like to change this to MPEG4 and then the video here, I just leave these all at the default of H.264, medium quality and good. And then we don't have any audio so I'll just turn this to no audio because we don't have any audio in the video edit. Okay, let's just scroll up here and then we need to set an output for where we wanna save this. So just click on the file browser right here and I'm just going to put this in a folder with the rest of my images as final animation, final animation, accept that. And then if you wanna save this, you can, you can save this Blender file by going file and save and just save this. I'm just going to press control F12 to render out the final animation. And you can see that it's rendering this a lot faster because it's just exporting it together as a video file. It's not actually rendering the entire image. All right, and it finished. So now let's hop over to our file browser to preview the final animation. All right, and here it is. Here is the final animation for the tutorial series. So this is it. So you have now officially completed my complete Blender beginner tutorial series. So if you've gone through the entire tutorial series and finished the entire thing, then let me know in the comments by putting a house emoji in the comments so I can know that you guys did the complete tutorial series. So now that you've completed this tutorial series, you should have a very good overview and basic understanding of Blender. And now you should be able to follow pretty much any other tutorial on my YouTube channel because all of the tutorials on my channel are for beginners or intermediate Blender users. So pretty much any other Blender tutorial on my channel you should be able to follow pretty easily. Now if you're wondering what tutorials to watch next, I wanted to recommend a few different tutorials that I've made. So we didn't do any sculpting in this beginner tutorial series, so if you'd like to learn how to do sculpting in Blender, I have a Sculpting with Blender for Beginners tutorial, you could check this out. And then after this video, I also have some other follow-along sculpting tutorials, so you can learn how to sculpt an orc, or a stylized face, or an alien creature, different things like that. Also, I have a sci-fi robot drone character creation tutorial series, so if you'd like to learn how to do more hard surface modeling and make this sci-fi robot, definitely check out this tutorial series. And as well as modeling the entire character, I also teach you how to rig the arms, and we also do texture painting in this tutorial series. We texture paint some grunge and dirt on the metal of the robot. And then I also show you how to animate this robot at the end of the series. And then as I talked about earlier, I also have a complete Blender video editing tutorial series. So if you'd like to learn video editing in Blender, then definitely check out this tutorial series. Also, Blender can do visual effects. So if you'd like to get into VFX, I have some different VFX tutorials right here, like Clone Yourself with Blender, how to make force lightning, and how to do green screening with Blender, and also how to create gunshot VFX in Blender using stock footage. Now, if you really enjoyed using Blender's materials, using all those different shader nodes and stuff, then you might wanna check out my procedural material tutorials. So what procedural means is that you're just using Blender's nodes and you're not using any textures from any texture websites. You're just using the nodes that are built into Blender and you're creating these different materials. So, so if you enjoyed using Blender's shader nodes and materials, then definitely check out these different tutorials. And if you'd like to learn how to make more photorealistic models, I do have some furniture tutorials that you can check out. So I have a tutorial on how to make a photorealistic lamp and a photorealistic dresser and some other tutorials. You can check these out as well. And also I'm doing art critiques on my channel. So if you'd like me to critique your artwork, you can just find one of these videos on my channel and there will be a link in the video description to a Google form where you can submit your artwork to be critiqued. And hopefully I'll be able to critique it in one of the videos. Currently I'm trying to do an art critique video about every two weeks. 
Also, I wanted to let you know that I'm trying to make Blender tutorials for a full-time living, so if you'd like to help support me, I do have a Gumroad store where you can download the tutorial files, and you can also download the 3D models and assets that I sell. So there will be a link to my Gumroad store if that's something that you're interested in. I also have a Patreon set up, so if you'd like to support me further, you could consider joining my Patreon, and if you join my Patreon, then you're going to get all the tutorial files, and you're also going to get the 3D models and assets that I sell. And I did want to say thank you to everyone who's currently on my Patreon. I really appreciate it because I'm trying to do this for a full-time living. But even if you can't support me financially, just following me on YouTube and watching my videos is a really great way to help out. So thank you for your support. So again, thank you so much for watching this complete tutorial series. I really hope it was helpful for you guys to get started with Blender. And with that said, I will see you in a future tutorial.